that comes to mind immediately is a woman, I'll say Mrs. C, who has now since passed away. Her first name was Geraldine. And it was one of the hardest cases I've had. You know, she was, um, when I first met her, in a vegetative state from a bleed in her brain. She was only 67 years old. And there was an incredibly devoted, anxious daughter um, there on the first visit. And I took care of her for 10 years. And over the 10 years that we took care of her, she woke up from her vegetative state because the bleed had recovered and healed, which can happen, but it was surprising. And then she said her main goal in life was to walk down the aisle of her church. So from seeing someone who was bedbound and unconscious in a vegetative state to five years later, she walked down the aisle of her church with a lot of medical care of blood clots at the home. She had some morbid obesity. She had hypertension, diabetes, and we ended up managing all of that, getting her rehab and therapy, and she kind of regained her life. She was still home limited and couldn't go down the steps outside the house, but she was able to regain her life, um, yet still needed really intensive primary care over many years. The reason it was the hardest case is her daughter had some mental illness and was highly anxious and a little bit um, critical and um, unre unreliable in some ways, but incredibly devoted to her mom. And so we had to navigate the mental illness in the home, um, lots of phone calls that we thought were maybe a little bit beyond reasonable, but recognizing the patient still needed us. And we stuck in there, we hung in there with her until the last week of her life, she then died of metastatic breast cancer and our nurse practitioner made the final visit where the daughter ultimately trusted us and was willing to accept home hospice, but only because many years of, of visits and building of trust had allowed her to die at home. But it took years to build that trust. So I, I think I learned more in some ways from the hard cases than I do from the easy and super heartwarming cases. So I think talking to students and young residents is probably the most fruitful time to get to them while they still have that sense of mission and they realize that you know that lifelong career choice really is going to be something that's going to affect how they enjoy their days every day of their life. Um, you want to join something that's going to make you grow personally, both in terms of emotionally and intellectually, so a challenging field, which home care medicine clearly is with very complex patients. But they also want to hear that there's something fun about doing this work, that it, you have a team that you can kind of manage all sorts of things you know, that the patient and family might need, and that you can succeed in doing this work. And I think that's where the team-based kind of opportunities can be convincing. Um, and, the, and then they also are looking for a lifestyle. And I think you know, we have to face the fact that people are looking for a lifestyle in terms of time for family and time where they're not on call uh, all the time. Um, and also financially able to pay off their loans and kind of have a reasonable kind of compensation similar to being a hospitalist or similar to being another type of doctor. And I think the lifestyle and compensation issues are kind of a work in progress. You have to offer them a, a chance to share the work with others um, and show that the compensation they're going to get is going to be competitive with other kind of areas. I actually think the money doesn't have to be better than other areas because I think really it's the personal reward, the mission, and the kind of enjoyment of the daily work that drives at least more than half the decision for young folks. Um, but the payment support needs to be present as well. Mm -hmm.